Therefore, we ask that even as we worship the Father and we worship Jesus, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome, Lord. Stay with us, Lord. Stay with us. May we be aware of you. We don't want to sing songs void of your presence. Your presence is everything. There where you are. May the Lord encounter you. Fullness of joy. Fullness of peace. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Welcome Holy Spirit. Acknowledge you. Find the light in this night. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Welcome to every person that's here inside the building and to every person that's watching online on Facebook, Church Online, and YouTube, and to every other streaming place. I pray that in this night that you would encounter the Lord in a personal way. I want to invite you in this one thing as what I do every single time when we open up that your best attempt you can't get God's attention you've already have his attention but one thing you can do is you can position yourself as an instrument in the hand of God and you become a portal of praise where the Lord would move through something contagious that as you worship like with Paul and Silas they heard him singing and praying and all the prison doors were open may it be by your praise and your worship that people around you will be liberated in this night by the praises of our God 
So let's worship our Jesus together. I want to ask you, use your body. You are an instrument of praise. Don't be silent. Use your body to worship our King. So let's enjoy Him together. Amen and amen. Good evening, Empower. Won't you make some noise for Jesus tonight? Come on, clap our hands. Yes, yeah. 
Schlösser. Im Bauer. Listen, it's the night hey, uh, I wonder if we're going to sing that song again. This morning I spoke to her, I said that there's something that God is shaking in the spiritual realm. Are you with me? Um, and if you're not sensing it yet or not feeling it yet, God is shaking things. He wants to set people free. Are you with me? Come on. And so as we sing it again, I want you to put energy into it and I want you to put freedom into it. Is that okay? Either the sun has set free is. No, no, no. He that the sun has set free is. So let's sing that again. Come on, put your hands together. Let's go for it. Come on in power. We can't have a... Come on, I want us to push up the energy. Come on. Let's get to a place of breakthrough tonight. Yeah, come on. He's fighting for us. He's the head of us.
You're the champion of my world.
Come on, let's worship the Lord.
are, why don't you just lift your hands to God, house lights please. Father, in this night we just give you all the glory and all the praise and all the adoration. Father, we lift up the name, the ancient name, Lord of Jesus, the Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our King. Father, in this time I pray, Lord, that he that has an ear, let them hear. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you speak to our soul. I thank you, Father, that in this night, Lord, that we can once again just say we love you, Jesus. Jesus, we love you. We lift up your name, Lamb of God. We lift up your, Lord, we lift up your name, Lord. Holy are you. Lord, you are greater than, you are bigger than. Father, I thank you, Lord, that in the midst, Lord, of many things, Lord, we can lift up the name higher than any other name, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess glory to the one and only. Father, we thank you that we can say, Jesus, we truly love you. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. You are the only begotten. And my Father, I pray in this night, Lord, come by your Spirit. Lord, come and move, Lord, in our hearts once again. Lord, thank you, Lord, for being, for choosing us, Father. Thank you, Father, that you chose me, you chose us, Lord. Thank you that we have the opportunity to worship you and to praise you and to lift up your name. And we say, holy are you, God, worthy to be praised, worthy to be adored, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And if you agree with that, why don't you just give Jesus 30 seconds of praise. There we are right now. Come on, let's just give him some praise. Come on, empower. Come on, let's put our hands together. Come on, let's just break that just for your open for me, please. Come on. Come on, let's worship in 30 seconds of praise. Amen and amen. Are you well in power? Thank you to the worship team. God bless you. Um, if I can just ask for the keys and Cornet, maybe just to stay with me. Um, you know, you're welcome to be seated. I, did you come tonight with an expectation in your heart? You know, I want to encourage you uh, before I start tonight. I want to encourage you to worship the Lord. Uh, this is the hour to worship God, right? Come on, say with me. Uh, this is the hour to worship God in spirit and in truth. Okay, you have to understand this is not the hour to play around. This is the hour to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Jesus made it clear in John chapter 4, verse number 23 to 24. He said, I came to seek worshipers. Are you there? Are you with me? So God is not looking for talent. He can make a donkey sing right. Or can I say that again? God can make anything sing right. He can choose a donkey and he can prophesy through a donkey. Are you with me? He is looking for people that will worship Him with everything that they have. People that will dance like David danced. People that will play that timbre like Miriam played that triple. He is looking for a people that will once again say, Worthy is the Lamb of God who are slain. Worthy are you, Jesus the Christ, the one and only. Not a way, the way. Not a truth, the truth. Not a begotten, the begotten. Are you with me? Come on, guys. Are you there? All the young people, do you have legs? Use your legs, please, young people. Toki, you must teach your young guys. They need to use their legs. I see some of the youth, they sit here, they look bored. Are you bored in church, guys? Hey, you're bored in church. Church is not a boring place. It's a place that we expel devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. Are you guys with me? You know, the posture of your worship is the attitude of your heart. Let me say that again. The posture of your worship is the attitude of your heart. And so if we want to teach this generation anything, we need to teach them to worship right. Are you guys with me? I watch you worship. Uh, I saw some people are making jokes and one or two. And I stand here on the pulpit. I think to myself, you know, this is not a play alley. This is church. Can I say that as the father of the house? Don't come here and play, make jokes. This is a holy place where we come to set people free, to introduce them to Jesus Christ. I say that without any excuse. This is my house. There's blood on this pulpit that belongs to me and the father that was before me. 
but don't come and play jokes here. Are you, is that okay? Let's worship Jesus. Let's sanctify this place. Let's exalt the name. Are you there? So tell your jokes outside, but as we come into the house of the Lord, we worship the Lord. We lift up our hands, O oh holy people. We give Him a shout of praise. Are you there? Okay, saying that I feel a little bit better. But I just want to put, the Bible says, the house of God shall be a house of order. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. Are you with me? And so sometimes I need to say these things as a father of the house just to set the temperature right in the spirit. Can I say that again? Come on, you need to celebrate when you have a father that's in the house that can speak sometimes and say, no, we don't do things like that. We don't make jokes while we worship the Lord. We worship God. He's worthy to be worshipped. One day you're going to stand in front of Him with all of His majesty, His power, His significance, his, all of His might, all of His angels, all of those that went before Him. He's going to stand there and you're going to stand there and you'll have to recognize that He's God. And there's not going to be an option to bow the knee. Every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. And so right now He's looking for a people that are full of the Holy Spirit and with fire. Not a people that are backslidden, playing with the world, one foot here, one foot there. No, He's looking for a people that are on fire for Him, that know His Word, that knows His Spirit, and that walk upright like they God. We are called to live in a time, an unusual time. Nonetheless, God has called us to be an unusual, peculiar, set-aside people in this hour. Are you there? We cannot look like the world. We can dress like them, smile like them, but we're nothing. we have nothing in common. We are here to save a world with a message from Jesus Christ Himself. What is the message? The message is you can be saved, you can be healed, you can be restored, you can be redeemed, you can be oppression free, you can be devil free, you can be sickness free, you can be whole now and forevermore. Your family can be saved, your life can be touched, your future can be secured freely have received freely give this is not a cheap message it's a message bought by the blood are you there come on in power do i have somebody here with me tonight that understands what i'm saying that it's not just a somebody it's the king of kings and the lord of lords it's the great i am it's the lion of the tribe of judah that we're talking about the same god the same god of jacob the same god of moses the same god of samson the same God heals, restores, sets free. Come on, are you there? <laughs> Bump your neighbor, say, wake up. Wake up, wake up. Wake up, O oh sleeper, wake up. The Bible says, watch and pray. <laughs> are you there? He says, watch and pray. Come on, are you, are you with me? Come on, give Jesus 30 seconds of praise. Come on. Come on, just love the Lord. 30 seconds. Let's love the Lord. Give Him a shout of praise. Come on, empower. Come on. No, you can do better than that. I want us to give Him a shout of praise, a proper shout, a proper freedom declaration that He that the Son has set free is free indeed. Come on. Your response tonight is going to set you free. It's going to help you. Are you there? Save me response. Let me teach you something. The response is everything uh, when it comes to the kingdom of God. God will do nothing for those that sit. Are you there? He can pass us by. And we can be watchers. Do you know that when you go to a soccer field, you get thousands of experts in the stadium? Yet only a few that play the game. And one guy that's calling the shots is called the referee. Do you know that none of the people in the stands, none of their opinions matter except the guy that's got the referee uh, jacket on? There's one referee in the whole of Scripture, and his name is the Holy Spirit. And unless we please him, we're not going to play this game successfully. Yeah, come on, are you with me? And so I want us to understand that there's a, there's a holiness, and that's why, you know, um, you should, be, you should be, feel very safe in a house where there's open rebuke. The Bible says better is an open rebu a rebuke than many secret kisses from the devil. Are you there? I would rather get an open rebuke than a, a thousand smooches from Satan. Because he that sins in secret dies in secret. Are you with me? 
And so I want to encourage you tonight, Empower Church. Let me love you as your father. Let me encourage you. When you come here, come and worship the Lord. You come here, come and praise Jesus. We put way too much energy and uh, everything else into it to have average worship. No, we worship Him in spirit and in truth. Like we worship Him this morning. We worship Him with everything we have. Why? He's worthy to be worshipped. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be. Are you there? And may I just say this? We have to sing the songs that glorify the Lord. (laughs) Tell Him who He is. He likes it. What is worship, by the way? Worship is the song He wants to, to be sang, which He creates. He puts in the heart of man, and man worships it back to Him. Are you there? Are you with me? Come on, just say amen to that. <laughs> okay, so Jesus wants worshipers. So better in a, in a moment like this that, you know, again I say, in a, as, better is it that we speak Like I speak tonight and I say to you, let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth because He's come to seek worshipers. Do you know that preaching is going to fail? Prophecy is going to fail, but worship will go forever. We will not need to preach the Word in heaven. Well, I think we might, but the point would be, it would not be to introduce Jesus. Jesus would be already introduced in heaven. Preaching is here to get men back to Jesus. Come on, are you there? Are you with me? Come on. And so preaching will cease because it has a redemptive nature, this side of life. But one thing we all will do forever and ever if we know the Lord, and that's why in this season that we, I I named my title of my sermon tonight is uh, Holiness and Hostility. We are in an environment that is hostile to holiness. And holiness is not something you do. Holiness is something you are. Let me say it again. Holiness is not an, uh, rules and regulations that we follow. Holiness is becoming who we behold. Come on. Because what I behold, I become. And what the enemy has done, he has fragmented, he has fragmented the image of who you are And so we don't know who we are, and therefore we are starting to listen to a multiple of voices. And Jesus makes it very clear, come on in power, I'm going to get you to freedom tonight. So excuse my fire, it's okay, I have enough fire to set fire on in many people's hearts. Because I will not negotiate with the enemy, I have negotiated with him long enough in my past life. Now I'm living fully for Jesus. Because I have been, you see, if you have sinned much and you've been saved from much, you can't live an average life anymore. I've been leading this church for many years, and I can tell you one thing, we will worship the Lord in this place. I'll spill a kiss or I'll lean with a guitar. I would not care. I'll worship the Lord. Come on, guys. Say, the pastor is speaking earnestly. No, 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 no. I want people to worship Him like David did. David worshiped the Lord so much that his wife looked at him and said, what are you doing? You, you're losing your pants as you're worshiping. And the Bible says God cursed her. Cursed her. Said, who do you think you are? Speak about my David. Want to be a friend of God? Worship Him. Your lifestyle is your strongest weapon to worship. Come on, give, your, give Jesus 10 seconds of praise here. And what I want you to understand tonight is very simply this, and, and I'll, I want to get into this message. You understand what I'm saying because I need to get many of you free here tonight. Is that you have to know we're living in a hostile environment where there's an anti-God movement. There's an anti-anointing movement. And to get closer to Jesus is not a tick box that you're going to tick and say, these are rules and regulations. That's called the law. No, you are saved by grace. And that grace should put you right next to God. Because the closer you become to Him or the closer that you get to Him, the more that that doesn't look like Him will be exposed. Are you with me? If you look at my skin, I'll use an example. If you look at my skin, you can say, oh, your skin is fine. It looks fine until you bring a a light close to it. When you put a dermatological light very close to my skin, you'll find impurities. Why? It's close to the source of the light. Are you with me? 
That's why whatever you do in secret is never in secret. It's just that it's not seen now, but it's seen on the fruit of your life. Are you with me? That's why you don't even need to tell me who are the people that worship the Lord and, and love the Lord during the week. I can see how they come on a Sunday. Because those that worship the Lord, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, they come Sunday, they look different, they worship different, light is upon them. Are you guys with me? And in the season where, where there's hostility um, around us, because you have to understand, Satan has taken the gloves off when it comes to Christianity. There's no more, uh, you know, you know there's, there's just no more play. Even, your, even th that what the children get indoctrinated with now is gloves off. Satan is playing no games. He is educating this generation. Come on, are you with me? In my day when I grew up, my mom took my turtles and my He-Mans and they, she burned them all. She said, you can't play with turtles, you can't play with He-Man. This stuff has influences on you. These days, the, we as young people, uh, and I still count myself young, um, we get indoctrinated by by all the voices that is around us, but there's one voice in your life that matters. And it's not the voices of friends, it's not the voices of popularity, it is the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. You see, I have to understand, it's the voice of God that makes you a definitive son and daughter of God. If you cannot hear your, His voice, then we might not be saved. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. And it's interesting for me, and I'll, I'll make this meeting now legal by reading out of the Bible. I, I want you to understand something tonight. Your, the, the way that you listen to Him, or the voice that you listen to, predicts the destination of your life. Are you there? Are you with me? I can take my phone, for example, and I can look at this. Um, let me use an example. I used it this morning. I'll use it again tonight. I think it's a good example. I can look at Instagram and I can look at all the other people's highlights of their lives and try to measure a highlight versus a normal life. Or I can look at TikTok and look at, oh, I've got 128,000 views. Oh, I must be popular. That's a voice. I can look at what other people have, what they drive, what they carry, and that can be a voice to me. Are you with me? There's a lot of voices. Right now in this season, there's, a, there's even more voices, more voices than ever before that we need to contend with. And if we don't know the voice of God, we're going to find ourselves in trouble. We, wanna, wanna, we will get to a place we want to fit in, but we will fit in so much that we don't fit into the kingdom. May I say this more? I'll say it tonight as well. I said it this morning, and I don't for, uh, make excuse by saying it. If I look at the scriptures, if I want to see my highlights, my highlights will be guys like Noah that would build an ark for a hundred years with no rain. If I would scroll down, I would look at a guy called Abraham that leaves his father and his mother and goes for a city that he doesn't even know the destination, yet God is the builder of it. I would like a guy like um, Jeremiah that was sown into. How about Paul the apostle that was beaten and that was stoned, yet he kept on preaching? How about Peter that, that denied the Lord but came back to Jesus and then he uh, refused to be crucified like the Lord? He got crucified upside down. Come under the heroes of the faith. What about modern day guys like John G. Lake for an example that was so full of the Holy Spirit that said, put any virus inside of my hand, it will dry up and die. Because he was convinced that he was a carrier of a greater spirit that was the spirit of this world. What about A.A. A. Allen that put his ear into a man's uh, ear and spits and says, both ears will be healed because I know the maker of the ears. His name is Jesus. Come on guys, where is our faith? Are we more, uh, you know, are we more impressed by what the world does than what our God can do? Come on, are you, are you guys with me? That's why this is the hour to worship and to praise Him because what you praise, you're going to behold. What you behold, you're going to become. Oh, come on, can I have an amen for that? And so there's only three voices. And I, I want you to understand this because the Bible makes it very clear that when the Israelites left Egypt, they, want, they needed to go and worship the Lord. Why did they need to go and worship the Lord? Because God wanted to transform them from the inside out. How? By worship. 
That's why this morning this whole church was packed. People danced. Why did people dance? Because it was a sound. A sound of worship. Are you there? Let me tell you, uh, across the ages, we will see millions and millions of people. Let me be prophetic quickly for a moment. This is the hour that we will see millions and millions of people coming into the kingdom like no other season, like no other time before. We are living in the, in the now hour of the Lord where the Spirit of the Lord will move across the world in a rapid space, in a rapid time, in a rapid moments. You will see people coming to Jesus like you've never seen it before. And the one thing that you have to understand, the Bible makes it this very clear. This should make you live in the fear of the Lord. That Jesus says, when you see all of these things, know that you are the generation that will not taste death but will see the coming of the Lord. What was he speaking about? He was speaking very clearly. He was saying that when you see all of these prophecies being fulfilled, surely I tell you, you are the generation that will not go to the grave, but you'll see the Lord come. What are the signs? Well, it's simple. I, I don't even want to teach on that tonight. The signs are simple. 2 Timothy chapter number 3, signs. That is the 25 signs of the people that will live in the last days. Go look at that. 2 Timothy chapter number 3 starts off in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves. Are you with me? Call me old school, but I grew up in a way that, um, and I don't think I'm old school like that, but I grew up in a way that we worship the Lord. In the last days you will find people, the Bible says, that will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure, hateful, haughty, arrogant, braggarts, have no, have no respect for marriage. Are we seeing that? Absolutely. But Jesus makes a, a, a powerful statement when the disciples ask him, Lord, what will be the sign of thy coming? What will be the end of the world? Jesus makes a very, very clear description. He says, let no man deceive you. He starts with that. Why does he start with the word deceive? Because the word deceive is a Greek word plano. The word plano means to be removed from so slowly. Are you with me? May I say to you, the devil is not impressed by what we quote from Scripture. He is very afraid of what you live in Scripture. The Bible says that do not, don't be doers or hearers of the Word. Do what the Bible says. Are you with me? Come on, guys. And I want to get us free tonight. I want to get us to a place. I'm very zealous for the things of the Lord because I understand that I'm, I've been called to a time such as this with you. You and I are called to a time such as now. God could have made you get born in any other time, but He made you to be born right now. Why did the Lord make you be born right now? Because He has a plan that looks like you. No, you didn't get what I just said. He has a plan that looks like you. You are the plan. Are you with me? And the one thing that Christians don't understand is that when you play with the devil, you're going to get burned. Are you there? Can't play with sin. Sin has got one desire, it's to kill you. Come on. You know, Christians, uh, Christians play with sin from time to time. And they think they're getting away from it. No, 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 no. no. You're paying with joy. You are paying with peace. You are paying by setting off the timelines of God. You're pushing God's timelines off for you. Ask me, I've lived long enough. I've lived long enough to understand what is wisdom. Wisdom is to fear the Lord and to depart from evil. That's right. Wisdom is to seek the Lord of all of my heart and lean not unto my own understanding. Wisdom is to humble myself in front of a mighty God, resist the devil and flee away from him. Are you with me? Wisdom. And God wants you to know His voice in this hour because the voice of God in this hour is so important for us. Church, listen to me tonight. The teaching that I, I, I'm, I'm trying to present to you tonight is going to help you tremendously because God wants to take you to a, a, different, a, look, a different location of Him. But you have to move with His voice. Are you there? Are you with me? You have to understand, you cannot look like the devil, you cannot act like the devil, and you cannot be influenced to do anything that you don't want to do. Everything about the Christian life is chosen. You have to choose. Are you there? The Bible says Jesus chose you, now you choose Him and you follow the Word of the Lord. Come on, can I have an amen just for that, please? 
And so what I want to say is very simply this, is that if I hear the voice of God, I can know the direction of His, that I need to go. If the voice of the Lord disappears out of my life, it means that I am not knowing where I'm going. It's very really simple. And one of the values that I want to put into place tonight as, as I get into the Word is that I want you to understand that if you love the Lord, you'll love His voice. Any relationship is only as good as the communication. Let me say that again. Any communication, any relationship is only as good as the communication. If a husband and wife sit together, they can like one another like a lot, but if they don't talk, they're not in a good relationship. Are you with me? And so when we love the Lord, we want to hear His voice because His voice means direction. Come on, are you there? His voice means direction. Say with me, His voice means direction. And so, so many Christians are in a space where they don't hear His voice. But if you don't know His voice, where are you going? Are you with me? I can stand here on the platform tonight to you leading this church and a couple of others around this nation and I can say, you, say to you like this, unless He speaks, we don't move. Because His voice guarantees success. But what I've learned from God is this, when He tells me go, He doesn't paint the whole picture. He doesn't need to. Because I've walked long enough with Him to understand that it's going to be from the time I, He says go, and I say yes, there's going to be many giants until we foresee the fulfillment of the going. But my job is as I go, I need to hear His voice many times. Oh, come on. His voice is so important that with his voice, Abram got sent out to go and kill Isaac. And he raised up his knife to kill Isaac. And just before he killed Isaac, God spoke again. God said, don't kill the boy. Now I know you love me. You will not withhold your son, your only son from me. If we don't listen continuously, we may kill off the things in our lives on a past revelation because we have stopped listening to God. Are you there? Come on, be save me the anointing. You want to be full of the anointing. Come on, are you there? All the guys that are here, help me please. You live long enough to understand that you don't live a life to impress a man. You live your life to press, impress God. Because people's opinions are just like noses. They come and they go. But you live your life on the value of what the king says. Are you there? And the king will choose once you start to listen to him. Absolutely ridiculous things for you. Because he wants you to live a life not by sight but by faith. The king's voice makes you do the impossible. The king's voice makes you extraordinary if you listen to him. Come on, are you there? Are you with me? The king's voice will make it impossible for you to live an average life. But you have to know the king's voice. The word preached, by the way, is that that's why the anointing is coming in as I'm talking. The, the voice, the word preached, by the way, is the Greek word kereso. It means to put your ear against the king's chamber, listening to what he's got to say, and then go out and be a herald for it, or saying what he says. Are you there? That's why when Jesus rebuked the, the devil, he didn't quote scripture. He loved the scripture. He said, you, you will worship the Lord your God. <laughs> Come on, guys. Are you with me? Give Jesus some praise, please. Okay, what I, I, I want to, I wanted to I, I do a demonstration, but I, I quickly just want to run through one or two of these points. The guys that are online of us are sick. People online, go for it, guys. Comment for me, please. Just put some fiery emojis in there. I want you to understand, the first thing that you need to understand by hearing God's voice is that God's voice is innate. Innate. That's not a too big a word. The word innate means if you are a sheep, you have to hear His voice. If you are not a sheep, um, then we need to teach you to become one because the sheep hear his voice and follows him. But one of the things that I've learned about being a, a sheep is this, 
that if I don't want to hear from the master, that I most, un, most likely won't. Because listening to Jesus takes sensitivity. Are you there? And there's only three voices that can speak to you. Your voice, the devil's voice, and God's voice. Your voice is emotional, it's historical, it's educational, and it comes out of your soul realm. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And your voice is a natural voice. It will tell you if you put your hand on the fire, it's going to burn. Your voice will most likely, if you have an educational voice in your life, it will, you will listen to your own voice for your educational background. Sometimes we allow the voice of hurt to speak to us, the voice of pain to speak to us, the voice of trauma to speak to us. All of us hearken at different times to different voices. The voice of the devil is completely different. The voice of the devil is anti-God. Are you with me? Let me prove to you out of Scripture. Can we go get into the Word? So the Word is innate. It, the, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. God speaks to His people. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And, my, and then He says in Isaiah 53, 55, 3, He says, incline, incline your ear and come to me so that your soul may love. One of the things that I want to make clear about the voice of God is very simply this. God's voice sounds nothing like fear. Nothing. No voice that it proceeds from the Father is a voice driven by fear. The only time sheep were ever driven in his ancient Israel is when they were led to the slaughterhouse. Sheep are never driven, they are led. Are you with me? So when we hear God's voice, it doesn't sound like fear and it's never motivated to be independent. Because the Bible makes it clear, it says, he that isolates himself seeks his own desire. People come to me all the time, not all the time, but sometimes they come to me and say, God says I must separate. No, 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 no. The Lord will never separate you. Everything God does, He does in the company of family. That's where He says, when two or more agree, I shall be there. Where two or more bind, I shall do what they say. Two or more all the time. Whoever separates himself is have a satanic nature inside of them. Because the first thing the devil did was to become independent of God. It's a lie from Satan. An actual fact, if I go really theological here, even the devil's existence right now is not independent from God. Because if God does not exist, Satan cannot. Because Satan is not a co-equal to the Lord. He is an angel that was created that had a purpose. Satan lost his purpose by trying to get the, the honor due to the Lord. And he had an eye right in the middle of his pride. Are you with me? And so he wanted to become like God. He wanted to ascend the heel of the Lord. And God said, no. Then he said to himself, well, I don't just want God's worship. I want God's characteristics. I want to be a father. Jesus calls him a father, the father of lies. Come on, are you there? So you have to understand one of the first things that makes you deaf to God's voice is the great I. Come on, I'm saying this with a lot of love. But you cannot become independent. Everything in the kingdom is interdependent. In other words, my success is, is hinged on how much I can build a solid relationship in a family context. Let me go a little bit further. If I'm not successful, Stefan cannot be successful. If Stefan is not successful, I cannot be successful. If I'm not successful, Given can't be successful. If Given is not successful, Shamaine can't be successful. And so I can name many of you guys that are sitting here. You have to understand everything God does is in a family context. Nothing He does is for one person to win. He wants the family to win. It's true. <laughs> Save me the anointing. This church has got an anointing. It's called the corporate anointing. We carry a certain mantle. We carry a certain anointing in this place. Are you with me? You have to understand when you come here, when you join this church, there's certain things that will be a benefit to you automatically. First thing that has to be a part of your DNA when you come to this church, you must become a worshiper. Second DNA trait that there must be if you're really here, you must start to carry favor because we're a house of favor. Third thing that must shift in your life is finances because we are a house of finances. The fourth thing that must shift in your life when you come here in this house is you must value family because we love people. The fourth thing or fifth thing that must shape in your life is when you come to this house, you must be a lover of the presence because we love the presence of God. I will, I will chase people away if they can't bring the presence. 
It's true. Because a good singing can't change people. The presence changes people. It's true. Come on, are you with me? Good preaching doesn't even change people. It's the spirit breathing upon the word that changes people. How do I know? Because I've taught over many months in this place. And then I walk away and I think to myself, why did the people not listen to me? And the Lord said, you've said the right thing, but they, I didn't allow them to hear that. Because unless the Spirit of the Lord makes it live, how can the people hear? Come on. And so everything God does, oh, come on, just say amen with me there to, just for a moment. So the voice of God in your life produces peace over fear. Faith over confidence and anxiety. Faith, faith and confidence over anxiety and despair. Let me say it again. The voice of God in the voice of God in your life produces peace over fear. Faith and confidence over anxiety and despair. In other words, when God speaks, it gives you confidence. Why? It's God. Are you there? When you hear the voice of the Lord, you get a confidence inside of you. Why? Because He's there. Come on, do, you, do I have somebody that's with me? Um, Pastor Stefan, quickly run here. Um, I want to just use it to use an example. Can I use a, um, Pastor Stefan, come here. Let me, I want to use an example. Um, I need a, I need a handbag. Is that okay? I'll give it back. Pastor Stephen, just close your eyes just for a moment. Give me a handbag, please. Anybody. I want to just, I want to demonstrate something. Pastor Stephen, I want you to listen to me carefully. Okay? I want you to turn to the side of the voice that you hear. Turn to my voice. Okay? Take two steps forward. Now, I want you to take your, your right foot, pick it up, and take a big step forward. Stand still. Take the other foot, also step forward. Now I want you to take your left foot and go one step to the right. Again, another step to the right. Okay, stand still. Okay, uh, let me show. Just stand still, oh, Stefan. Remember, I'm God, you can't move. <laughs> I want you to understand tonight. Now I want you to take one step backwards, slowly other foot now I want you to stretch both your hands out forward and slowly sit backwards okay it's fine you can open your eyes listen what did he just show he demonstrated faith I gave him instructions based on no sight I gave him instructions based on no vision if we to quickly turn around stand up I want you to understand quickly sit I want you to understand something here tonight thank you I want you to understand something if you listen to God he's got places prepared for you to make you sit the problem is Many of us are fighting for positions in life. And God has prepared a place for you. And the, the reason why we are not sitting in the places of victory in our lives that you so eagerly desire is because we don't love His voice. Jesus said, I go away to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you plainly. You have to understand the whole Christian life has just been what he's been showing. I, I made him skip an obstacle that he could have stepped on. 
but I made him obstacle free by him just listening you have to understand come on church you have to understand your strongest ability to overcome in this life is not your fighting against the devil it is your listening ability come on give Jesus some praise and some honor thank you are you with me what makes you dangerous is you've got two years to hear the voice of God. Oh, come on, give God some praise and some honor. Do you, have, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to prophesy over you tonight I also because I want you to know this. This is a problem of gener- this generation. We speak twice, we listen once. We use this whole way too much. No. Listen to the Lord, your God. So when we hear God's voice, like Stephen heard my voice, it doesn't sound like fear because I'm calm. One thing about the nature of God's voice is you have to understand when He speaks, He's always calm. Why? He's in control. You will never hear the voice of God speaking and fretting. And being all worried and all concerned. How are we going to do this? How are we going to pay that? How are we going to solve this? No, that's not the voice of God. God is always in control. I'm sorry to say, He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. And He's the same now. And forevermore. Yeah, come on. And if I can get just, uh, if I can get an uprising in this church where you become a people that become to be a declarative people that say, I know the voice of my master, I know the voice of my God that doesn't sound like him, fear doesn't sound like him, anxiety doesn't sound like him, depression doesn't sound like him, defeat doesn't sound like him, poverty doesn't sound like him, then my God, we have an army that we are raising up. Are you with me? You have to understand, I I know what I'm talking about because if you don't listen, it will cost you a life. Come on. I'm tired of of telling you things that you have to listen to the voice of God. It produces peace over fear, faith and confidence of anxiety and despair. Never listen to people that induce fear in you. Don't listen to a, a person that loves you. When God speaks, He never violates His word. Ever. No, but the Lord says, you know, you don't need to do this. Whatever. Where the Bible says it, God cannot, God has placed Himself under His word. He can't violate His word. No, but you know, in 2022, we need to, no, 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 2022 is the next. When 2022 was, the word was there long before 2022. Amen. No, but we need to fit in, fit in where? For who? To impress what? No, I'm not going to fit in. I am what the word says I am. Are you there? When God speaks, He never violates the word of God. When God speaks, there has to be an inner witness. It's scriptural what I'm saying to you now. The Bible says he bear witness with our spirit that it's him speaking. When there's a witness, it means yes. When there's a clearance, it means go. Where there's a restraint, it means no. Are you there? If you don't, let me make it simple. If you don't have peace, it's no. If you feel light and you feel released, that means you can go. If you feel restraint, it means consider the matter and go back to God. But if there's no peace, there's no God. The voice of God, listen to me. And this is something that people think are, are not true, but I'll tell you, I'll quote many scriptures for you right now. The voice of God can always be subjected to counsel. The scripture says one of the names of Jesus is counselor. The Bible says he that listens until counsel is wise. Where there's no counsel, people fall. 
but in the multitude of counselors they are established plans go wrong when there's too few counselors the book of Proverbs says but with many counselors there are success Now let me let me tell you something the other day I, I sat in a situation where and I'm I'm still nice and young but I I sat in a situation and I didn't have the answer for it and so I thought to myself well I'll phone somebody that is older than me they were about 30 years older than me and they've lived longer than me they're less successful in the eyes of the world but I thought to myself I felt the Lord say phone them ask them for advice because they've lived longer than you so I phoned them I said listen um, this and this and this I said what do you think and they gave me a long list of stuff to consider I said thank you very much thank you so much for your time and God bless you and I said to Shannon as I spoke to her afterwards I said I would have never thought about everything this man said out of his list of about 30 things he made me write down I thought about three of them but you see I had 30 years with God that have taught him lessons and now I'm gaining his insight as a 40 year old I'm learning to walk like a 70 year old Now if I think to myself, if you want to be successful 20 year olds that are here, go and sit with people that have lived the little, go sit with the 30 year olds, go sit with the 35 year olds, go sit with the 40 year olds and come and ask us, what have we learned about God? And we can solve a lot of your issues very quickly because we've learned the value of counsel. It's true. Come on Given, you should jump up here and say Amen. The voice of God will always bring confirmation. It's true. One of the best principles for determining the will of God is the scriptural confirmation of two or three outside witnesses. Not inside, outside. In other, in other words, when you are offended, let's talk about a real deal. When you are offended, you can't go get another person that are offended and let them agree with their offense and then both of you go. No, that's not scriptural. You need to find some voice outside of the voice of your condition to speak into your matter. Oh, come on, are you there? Then, point number eight, very quickly, are you learning tonight? The voice of God will always bring unity between man. One of the characteristics that it's not God speaking is when there's disunity. It's true. I can save many marriages just there. No, but sorry said. Huh? No, but you know, Bible says all of us is the church. Really? No, the last time I checked, the Bible says never forsake the assembly of believers. Yes, you're a house, but you're quoting one scripture out of context. Come on, are you there? Like, for example, these days people are saying because one guy made a video and say, no, don't tithe anymore. Listen, Jesus himself said tithe. Amen. Then he said, do not neglect the greatest things of the law. Mercy, grace. Come on, just because TikTok says it, don't believe it. TikTok is not the word of God. Amen. This thing was written by the Spirit of the Lord. Not by some Chinese company. It's true what I'm saying. Our worlds are influenced by influencers. My question to you tonight is whatever is influencing you, what is influencing them? There should be one thing as the Bible says, do not be drunk of wine, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because whatever fills you, controls you. I'm sorry to say, but I'm not filled by the opinions of things. I'm filled by the glory of the one and only Jesus the Christ. I'm filled by the Spirit of the Lord. I'm a train center. I'm a destiny shaper. I'm a history maker. I'm a devil caster. I'm a healer. Come on. Why 
why he said it. It's not even me. He said it. He said, go and heal. Okay, go and heal. How? Just go. Cast out devils. How? By the power of God. Come on, guys. Are you with me? I'm preaching like a, a silly person here tonight. Why? I'm gonna, I want to get you to a place where you become who you are. You have to become who he says you are. You cannot be what the enemy has said. You cannot become your hurt. You cannot become your past. You cannot become what has happened to you. You are greater than that. Are you with me? You have to know. Let me summarize quickly then. I want to get into this. I I want you to understand this. There's three voices that can speak to the voice of God, the voice of Satan, the voice of man. Your emotions can talk to you. Don't listen. Your education can talk to you. But if it's against the word, you shouldn't listen. Your culture can talk to you. But if it's against the word, don't listen. Your pain and your past can talk to you. But if it doesn't speak according to the word, then it's wrong. And so the simple characteristics of how God actually speaks is very simple. Eight quick steps. I'll summarize them for you because people will listen to, my, to this later on. When it is God really speaking, you'll know it's God. God sounds like God. Two, when, it, when it's God's voice, it won't produce fear. It will, it will produce a, a sense of solidness. But more than that, it will never separate you. Point number three, when it's the voice of God, it is always peace over fear, faith and confidence over anxiety and despair. When it's the voice of God, when God speaks, He never violates His own word. When it's the voice of God, there has to be an inner witness. When it's the voice of God, it will, can always be subjected to wise counsel. When it's the voice of God, it can always and will always bring confirmation. And when it's the voice of God, it brings unity. Why am I saying all of these things to you? Because you have to hear His voice if you want to be holy in a hostile environment. Because if you don't know his voice, where are you going? Who's leading you? Are you with me? If all of us are so heavily entrenched by what Satan does, then I believe that the enemy then has started to set the agenda. No. The Bible says God sets the agenda. Are you with me? But... Let me say it like this. Let's say this Bible was soap, right? If I have a piece of soap here, and I walk around with my piece of soap, this piece of soap does not make me clean. I can be a carrier of the soap. I can handle the soap. I can put it in a nice folder. I can tell other people about the soap. But that's not the reason for the soap. The soap was meant to be introduced to water. The water and the soap was meant to be introduced to you. So when you apply the soap, you start to learn the strength of the soap. And other people don't need you to tell them about the strength of the soap. They'll just know you clean. Why? You smell like the soap. You don't need to stand next to them and say, hey, hey, I'm clean. They know you're clean. They can smell it. True Christianity is not walking and telling people, I'm a Christian. I sing in a church. I come there every now and again. I'm a pastor. I'm a prophet. I'm a what? No, 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 no. That's not needed. No. No. Apply the word. Then people will say, you're different. Why are you different? Why do you act different? It's because I've become an applier, not a hearer. I've become a doer, not a sayer. I'm not saying that it's easy. I'm saying it's worthwhile. 
Listening to God will often get you into trouble with man. Because this is the thing about God. He often doesn't ask for their opinion. Many of the things that the Lord has said to me to be obedient to Him about, He has not considered other people's opinions when He told me about it. He says, go. I'm like, okay. But, no buts, just go. Are you there? Well, what I've learned about the voice of God is that, let me say it like this. I just want to land this, this sermon right into our hearts. I've got three daughters. As a father, I've learned to love my kids now. And I love them. Put up for me Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 25. I love my daughters by my words. I tell them they're beautiful. I tell them they, they look good. I tell them they're smart. I tell them they're attractive. I tell them that they are highly prized. I tell them they are princesses. I wash them continuously with words of love affirmation and when they do wrong I'm the voice of correction I'm also a voice of discipline but I can never be a voice of discipline if I'm not a voice of compassion I want you to understand no, no, listen 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 you guys are gonna catch what I'm saying just now because I know as a father I know as a father, look at that scripture. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. I think it's verse 24 or 26. No, it's 26. Go on. That he might sanctify her and cleanse her by the washing of water by the word. Jesus loves his bride so much he washes her by his words. He tells her, your beloved your mind Jesus has got such a high value for the church he walks the midst of the church Revelation 1 and he still counts the church as golden worth to die for here's the point are you guys okay here's the point let me come down here's the point here's the point I want you to understand I need to train my children how the sound, the voice of love sounds like. Because they're my beloved. They are my kids. Are you there? Why? Because I know that as they go in life, there'll be other voices that will want to speak to them and try to reinduce them to something that they are not. And so I make very sure I'm the loudest voice. Because it is the voice of the beloved that is always has to be the dominant voice in our lives. And if I can take it really, really scriptural for you and really to a higher dimension how God sees this whole thing, is Jesus' voice needs to be so dominant in our lives that any other voice, we can reject it immediately and say, that's not the voice of the beloved. Come on, church, are you with me? Jesus, as what well, I can use my example tonight of, of my kids, I understand that the voice of love needs to be so strong and the standard needs to be so high because someday they're going to come to me and they're going to say, I have found love and they need to they know what love looks like. So I have a window period to tell them that they are my beloved. I have a window period to tell them that they are whole, that they are well, that I don't need to impress this world. They are perfect as they am. Why? When they are in my house, I have the voice of love because they're in my house. When you are in the house of God, the dominant voice that should be in your life is the voice of the beloved. 
that cries out, you are worthy, you are beloved. Come on, church. Are you with me? And that's why, as you are here tonight, let me say it like this. Are you still saved? Okay. Listen, I'm a good father. That's why I speak to you openly tonight. Because again I say, better it is to talk like this and you get to freedom than not be free. And I want to say this tonight that you guys can catch my heart. That the Lord is jealous of you. He is a jealous God. He's jealous how you spend your time. He's jealous how you wake up. He's jealous what you waste your time with. He's jealous of you. He is a jealous God. Jealous. So I thought jealousy is a devil thing. No, 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 no. Jealousy is something God made, something Satan twisted. Jealousy comes from the Lord. You know how we get holy? We stop trying. We stop trying. And you know how you become holy? You let the voice of the beloved reign over your life. And it will make you uncomfortable. Let me give you a testimony. Then I'm going to can I, then I, can I, can I then prophesy? Is that okay? I'm just saying because I'm polite. But I want you to understand something here. When I was way younger now, when I was in my, in my, in my 17, 18, we like to go out to places and, and, you know, Joel and all this stuff. And, you know, and I was in these places and clubs and all of these things. But I could never be there without the voice of God plaguing me eventually I would pick up the phone I'll phone my mom I'll say please stop praying because God doesn't leave me alone as a belief I just want to be naughty without the Lord I can tell you many testimonies like that. Where I had a mom and a dad that prayed. Here I stand, they in heaven now. I've become the fulfillment of what they prayed for. You have to. You see. I'll tell you another story quickly. I'll remember it. I would remember the story. I will, you know, it's one of our family stories, but I'll tell it with family so I can tell you. There's one night I took out this very nice looking girl. This was now long before I got married, by the way. And so I took out this, this girl, and you know, as young men, you know what to say, how to say it, when to say it. Does anybody have a, a witness here with me? I knew how to play the game. I knew how to smile. I knew what to buy. I knew how to do it. Are you there? And if you know anything about baseball, you'll know where I'm going with this. I don't know if there's sharp people here tonight. Does anybody get what I'm saying? Okay, and I was not on first base anymore. I was moving along the base full field. Well to a home run. Well on my way. And suddenly, my phone rings. It's 12 o'clock at night. I'm like, who in the heavens will phone 12 o'clock at night? And God knows what I'm saying is true. It was my dad. He says, God woke me up. He says, stop it. I got such a fright. I ran. I went from third base all the way out the base. You understand what I'm saying? Because love fought. 
that I would not sell something that I didn't understand yet. Listen to me tonight. You need the voice of God that cries out over your life. Stop it! So that you can still be whole. So that you have something to give away one day. Come on! Are you there? Are you there? Come on, give Jesus some praise and some glory. Are you guys with me? <laughs> it's true. Come on, the Lord loves you so much. If you just listen to Him, He'll help you skip a lot of stuff in your life. If you just listen to Him, He that loves me, do my commandments. We're living in an age and generation, I'll close of this. We're living in an age and a generation now where the enemy is fighting for your soul. He's fighting for your attention. He's fighting for what you would pray, pay to put as a high value. If, I'm a, if I can give you some advice tonight, all the young people that are here, there's many here I see, let me give you good advice. Don't live to impress people. Point number one. Point number two, get the education. Point number three, land the job. When you land the job, before you buy the car, save. After you've saved, invest. Let your friends buy the expensive cars. You, you just war, you just work in silence. You invest, you invest, you save, you invest, you save, you invest, you save, you invest. I promise you, if you're wise, they will want your life. Because at the end of the month, they will have bills and you will have smiles. Why? You have chosen differently. This system of this world will love you to be indebted. That's why they're phoning you all the time. They say, please take out a personal loan. I said, Bliff, you look so beautiful. Come, you are worthy. Come, come, buy the clothes for 10,000. And no, if you need to buy clothes on credit, don't buy it. It's good advice. And everybody should say amen. amen. Save. <laughs> okay, let me get off that. But we're living in a generation. Do you know South Africa is 72% indebted? That means for every 100 bucks people in this country earn, 72% of that goes back. They haven't, it's not even theirs. It's ridiculous. You are owned. One of the first things Jesus does for you, by the way, in Colossians 2, 14, He sets you free. I'm not a legal advisor. I'm just a or financial advisor. I just have a brain. Be wise. Why am I saying what I'm saying? Because our whole culture has fallen into this thing. If I have, I am. If I have, I am. Who says that? Quote for me the scripture, please. No, I am. Then I can have. That's why when you're a son and a daughter of God, that's why I'm teaching this whole church to understand rights. Because I'm teaching them they are. They are a son. They are a daughter. And because they are sons and daughters, they don't need to have sickness. Why? Sons and daughters don't have sickness. And if you do, it's illegal. Are you a fan? But what I have is not who I am. Because if that's true, and I'll close of this, oh, I don't want to land you. But if what I have is who I am, then it means that you have given your peace to what you have. And that means as, loose, as soon as you lose it, you lose you. So this is what God does. Let me go to God quickly here. Uh, thank you Holy Spirit you're beautiful as you help me the Lord knows what you like but he takes note of what you love 
And if you love anything more than Him, He's going to ask for it. You say, give me a scripture. Okay, I'll give you one. And then we'll land it here. And then, we'll, and then we can minister. Is that okay? Abram, give me Isaac. But Lord, you gave him to me. I know. I want him back. But Lord, you said, you gave me a promise that I will have as, as a, a remnant as much as the sand of the sea. How can I give birth to a remnant unless, unless I have Isaac? Are you guys there? You guys are going to stand there long. I would suggest go to the back. I'll call for you when it's time. Listen to me. Isaac, Isaac, God asked for Isaac. Are you with me? Come on, smile. He asked for Isaac. He says, give me Isaac. Abraham is like, how can you ask for Isaac? How am I ever going to see the promise being fulfilled if I don't have Isaac? God says, give me Isaac because I see you love Isaac more than what you love me. Bible says, God says to Isaac, Isaac, we're going to go. We're going to offer up on the mount called, what's the mount again? Moriah. Moriah. Here they go. Isaac carries his own wood. Why? Many years later, there's another son who will carry his own cross. Come on, are you there? Are you with me? Come on, are you okay? Abram is about to plunge that knife into Isaac's chest to kill the promise. And God says, whoa, don't do it. Why don't you do it? God says to him, now I know that you love me. Then he throws out a second sentence that should shake us to our score. To our core. Now I know you fear me for you have not withhold your son your only son whom you love and then God says I don't need your son I'll provide my own lamb then God gives him back Isaac and as much sand as the seashore and the promise comes to fulfillment why? God wanted Abram's heart. Are you there? What am I saying? Matthew 6.33. Throw up for me quickly. Matthew 6.33. Seek he first the kingdom of God and all things. What things? Some things. A few things, marriage, kids, work, promotion, no, all things. Why? You've made him first. Are you there? Come on, guys. Are you there? Come on, let's give him some praise. I want us just to understand this tonight. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all things shall be added unto you. And so tonight, it's very simple. We just need to make sure that we're seeking all things. And God can add to us. Amen? Come on. Are you with me? And so it's very simple for us to understand all things. We have to become back. You see, it all comes back to where I started. It all comes back to the heart of what we worship and who we worship. Are you there? Are you there? Come on, guys. Okay, now the worship team, you guys can come. You're beautiful, you. I want us to raise our hands just for a moment. Can you? Can you pray in tongues? Let's pray in tongues. Come, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Come on, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's pray. Um, that got those people there. Um, so you have the black jacket. Is that your wife next to you? Your wife, won't you stand, please? Both of you, won't you stand? Is that your wife? You married? Sure? 
Okay? I see the hand of the Lord moving things in your life. There was, there's been a season where things haven't been in place like it should have been. But I see the Lord moving things suddenly and quickly now in your life. There's been a time that you've been overlooked, so greatly overlooked and undervalued. There should have been a lot of opportunities. There actually was opportunities that came your way, but you've met, somehow every single time it's like the enemy just pushes you off the timeline and you don't get the breakthrough that you want and that you need. And I hear the Lord saying to me tonight that you're going to step into the right season in the right time now because now is the Kairos time. The things that you guys have been fighting for in prayer, God's going to deliver it to you. This is you are going to walk into a season of peace now. And I see a lot of clutter falling away from you as a family. And you're going to know joy like you've never known joy before. Because the countenance of the Lord is upon you. And even as you stand here tonight, I see the Lord saying, I've gone to battle for you. There's a lot of prayer that has happened in your family for the two of you. I see a lot of prayer, a lot of praying. And I hear the hand of the Lord, uh, I hear the voice of the Lord saying to me, I'm going to place my hand upon you, afresh and anew. You'll see a shift in your workplace. And the dominant thing that's going to happen in your life, you'll see peace in your house. There'll be a fresh peace in your house. And you'll laugh again. You'll laugh again. There was a time that you laughed a lot together. God's going to restore that laughter. And you're going to laugh a lot again. Because the joy of the Lord is going to be your strength. Because you have made up your mind, your hearts recently. You've said that it's the Lord that we're going to seek. It's the Lord that we want. And I see the hand of the Lord heavily upon you. Amen. God bless you. The lady there with the, with the red, uh, with the, you have a hat. Yes, ma'am. Can you please stand? Yes, it's you. Ma'am, I, I, I see the hand of the, I see God just saying to me, very simple, business, promotion, finances, and favor. Just those four words. Business, promotion, finances, and favor. I feel the Lord is saying to me, He's given you a keen mind. You're very intelligent. You're an intelligent being. You're a strong woman. You fight for what is right. You don't li like gray areas. You're black and white. You like what is right. You don't like what is wrong. You're a fighter for justice. You know what is right. And I hear the Lord saying to me, those four areas will happen quickly for you. There's been a time that it's almost like your, you and your family hasn't had the opportunities you had. But I hear the Lord say, if I am open up the door, no man can shut what I open. And so I see a door of great opportunity opening up for you. And this door that the Lord's going to open for you, man cannot shut what the Lord opens. I tell you, God bless you so much. Um, that uh, family there, uh, you guys, the, the Lumais, I think Lumais is that. Listen to me. There's people that are trying to get your hearts by speaking to you. Stop listening to a multitude of voices. Listen to a single voice of God. If you listen to the voice of the Lord consistently, God's going to bless you out of your boots and your socks. But there's people that are contending for your hearts. They are, I see, our people are, are planning and scheming. They want to talk to you a lot. But you have to put your heart upon what is righteous. Because as you do, God's going to help you and assist you. God's going to bless you. What I see ahead of you, the Lord's going to do in your life and in your whole family's life what's absolutely impossible. But I hear the Lord say, I'm jealous for your heart. I'm jealous for your life. I'm jealous for the two of you because I want to use you excessively, extraordinary. There has to be signs, wonders, and miracles. You can't be ordinary. There's too much gifts that is there to stay ordinary. Even in your son, even in your family, I see a lot of gifts. And I hear the Lord say, tell them it's time for all of these gifts to come alive. Because I want to use each and every one of them mightily in my hand. You'll have to say no to certain friends that are knocking very hard on your door right now. You have to turn your, your back. And God doesn't show me everything. I just see friends and voices knocking. You'll have to walk away from it to walk into your destiny. You see, sometimes you need to lose company to find destiny. Lose the company, find the destiny, and walk into the purpose of God. The hand of the Lord's upon you. I release this word to you. What took you months will take you weeks. What took you weeks will take you days. What took you days will take you minutes if you believe the Lord your God. I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The lady there right at the back, it caught my attention with the red, red jersey. You know God likes, is it Fakazil, is it you? The Lord likes it when you like other people. You know what caught, caught my attention as I was talking there? It was you celebrating them. 
let I want to pray just I just want to say this out of your life may the promotion and make the processes of the Lord become easy for you and you know what I see I see a lady of destiny as you, as you stand there tonight and I hear the Lord say to me you have never been made never been called to do things in an ordinary way that's why that's why it upsets you when it's ordinary it has to stand out and I hear the Lord say you're gonna stand out I've made you a rose that's gonna stand out nothing about you is gonna be ordinary and in this next season you're gonna see Fakazili you're gonna see how the Lord is gonna move with his power and his might upon your life and things that is, that are you thought will never happen to you will happen to you because you've delighted in the Lord there was a, a in the last year there was a chance for you to leave but you never left you stay the Lord said I'm with the faithful and I crown the righteous may the Lord crown you in this night and as you go to bed to the next night and wake up tomorrow morning may you know that you're not just any ordinary woman you are highly favored by the Lord your God everything about you speaks about extraordinary I bless you of that in Jesus name amen and amen amen and amen amen and amen come on let's just give Jesus some praise and some honor There's a young girl right there at the back. Um, you, you just clapped hands there. That's you. Yeah. Is it Malandri? Sorry, I can't see so far. Malandri, I see power. I see unusual power. I see, I see as, you, as you stood there, I couldn't see so far. This light's so heavy. So, but what I see is God's power upon your life. And I hear the Lord say to me that you're going to work in power. Power. You know, Catherine Kuhlman had a desire to know the Spirit of the Lord. And as she knew the Spirit of the Lord, she became such a friend of the Holy Spirit that wherever she went, she changed atmospheres. I want to pray for you and just say that out over your life. God has selected you to be a changer and a shifter because you are as strong as what you are and as small as what you are there's a power of God that rests upon you Amen. the future is not ahead of you it's inside of you Amen. as the tree is not outside of the seed it's inside the seed so the future is inside of you and God wants to use you ex extraordinarily that's why you cannot you cannot settle for normal and you cannot pray for the ordinary stuff God's going to give you that desire to seek the, un, the, the, the things that only He can do that's why you have to, you, God's going to send you into these situations and positions where you'll have to start to, to if it's not Him, it's not going to happen. Amen. I bless you that. Have a hunger for the Lord. Have a thirst for God and you'll see the Lord move. This man here with the black shirt, the Adidas shirt, is that your, your friend next to you? Yes, you, sir. Is it your wife? Is it your wife? Yes. The Lord's going to create opportunity for you. Opportunity. You need opportunity. You've trusted the Lord. And you've said, Lord, make a way. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to give you a way. I'm going to make a way for you. And I'm going to give you an opportunity. And it's not going to be a narrow opportunity. It's going to be a wide door that God's going to open up for you. And it's going to happen easily. You won't need to fight for it. You've fought a lot in your life. There's a lot of fighting that went on to come to where you are. I hear the Lord say, no more fighting. You will not need to fight for this next season. God's going to give it to you. I tell you the truth again. There's a door of opportunity that will happen and open up for you. You won't, won't need to fight for it. God's going to make you enter into it gracefully. Gracefully. And I hear the Lord say that over, your, over you as a, as a couple, God's going to give you new peace, new joy, new life. You're going to enjoy one another going to enjoy one another let me say that again enjoy one another enjoy one another amen come on let's give Jesus some praise there's a um, right there the back of the jean jean jacket on is your daughter next to you you too yeah yeah, that, yeah, that's you. Um, I know your names, but I, I forgot now. 
both of you. What's your name, ma'am? Al Alma. Alma, I see in your daughter, I see, I see art, I see singing, I see dancing, I see a great gift on her life. Your, your, um, what's your daughter's name? Marashay. Marashay, everything about you is meant to stand out. You're like a star being shot off. And God's going to give you the stars of the sky. Even as I stand here tonight, I, I see your name on billboards. I see your name being written all over. And I, and I hear the Lord say to me, I'm going to shoot you like a shooting star. One thing you have to do is to protect your heart. I don't know you, you don't know me, but what I do know is that I see a shooting star. And I hear the Lord say, Alma, that, that your prayers has got a lot to do with her future. You're a praying woman. You're a righteous woman. You're righteous. You hate uh, dodgy things. You don't like it. You're a lover of truth. God likes you. He trusts you. That's why He gave you a gift. Let me say that again. God trusts you. That's why He gave you a gift to steward. And the Lord, as I'm standing here, Ecclesiastes 3.1 comes in, into my spirit. Where the Bible says this. There's a time and there's a season for everything under the sun. And as I stand in front of you, I, I see the Lord shifting seasons over your life. And it's going to happen quickly. I see finances coming to finance the dream. I see God putting your daughter into the ears of people that can make things happen and happen quickly. Again, I say, I don't know you, but I, what I do see, I see contracts in front of me. I see people opening up doors. I see phone calls. And I see it happening very quickly. Because the Lord has got the best of heart for you. Because you've had an opportunity to turn your back on the Lord. And you didn't. And I hear the Lord say, because you didn't, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with those that seek out righteousness. Blessed are they that, that seek righteousness, for they will see God. I tell you, it will be like a shooting star. The only thing that you need to protect, Marashe, you said, right? Protect your heart. Out of it flows the issues of life. The enemy only wants one thing. He wants your heart. Never give him the song that I see inside of you. I see many songs inside of you, art songs. Don't give the enemy the songs. Sing to the Lord. Sing, 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 because you're going to be like a shooting star. I tell you, we will, we will most likely come and watch you do this as the Lord makes you rise. God is going to make you rise because His hand of favor is upon you. Bless you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Oh, come on, don't you just love the Lord? Man, right here in the front, I, I see the Lord just saying to me as, as I looked at you, I, I hear, heard the Lord say, no more trouble. No more trouble. Peace. No more figuring it out. No more trying to understand how, when. I hear the Lord says, no, 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 it's not going to work like that. I'm going to make it easy. No more trouble. The Lord loves your gentle spirit. You have a gentle, contrite spirit. You love the Lord. You love the things of God. You're honest. You don't like it. You're strict. I can see you're strict as well. You don't take nonsense from nobody, especially your children. But I see the hand of the Lord upon your life. And I hear the Lord say, no more trouble. I'm going to give you peace. So walk into your house, you're going to find peace. Walk into your workplace, you're going to find peace. The hand of the Lord is upon your children. I want to give you a promise from the Lord. The Lord says to me to say to you, never worry about your children. Their future is already set. Teach them just this one thing, to listen to my voice. And I'll lead them in all paths of righteousness. You have gone to war with the enemy in prayer. And you've won. You've won already. As I stand here, I see your children. And I hear the Lord say to me, tell her. The future is set already in her prayers. You have finalized the matter, but I hear the Lord say, no more trouble. Peace to you now. I bless you with peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I do one or two more? Is that okay? You see, the Lord loves you. So He likes to talk to you, right? Young man here with the blue. I hear the Lord say to me that, do not let the missed opportunities of the past stop you to do what you need to do now. 
you've missed an opportunity or two it's all good but let, let not the opportunities of past that you've missed stop you from what you must do now do what you must do now and go for God give Jesus everything you have because God wants to move of you there's one or two incidents in the past where you've missed it once or twice so be it, it's fine I hear the Lord say it's fine have a mistake on me but move with God now this is the hour to move of the Lord the Lord wants to give birth to a brand new dimension in your life brand new you're gonna you're gonna do things in your life that's gonna keep your whole family amazed whole family your family will stand amazed by what you are doing so I say again the Lord says to me go I must tell you go for it again and this time you'll be successful I also just want to say to you, I hear the Lord just say this very simple to me. The mistakes you think that's disqualified, just not disqualified. I hear the Lord say to me, I don't even consider them. I must tell that to you. I don't consider what you've done. I consider what you're going to do. And so I want to say to you, whatever voices, whatever mistakes there are, the Lord tells me, I don't know you, you don't know me, but I'm telling you the truth from the voice of God. The Lord says to you, I don't remember what you've done wrong. I've blotted, I'll give me, let me give you a scripture. I've blotted your sins out as far as the east is from the west. I remember them no more. He's the God that loves you that much. Amen. Come on, don't you love the Lord? Um, that gentleman with uh, gray hair, he always greets me so nicely. I see a work of your hands. I hear the Lord say, in this next season of your life, you can, as you work practically, you, you're a practical man. You can do anything. I hear the Lord say, as you do many things practically, so you're going to put hearts together practically. I'm going to give you skill, understanding, wisdom beyond your years. And I hear the Lord say, even in your youth, as the enemy came to steal, to kill and to destroy and make you confused about what I want to do with your life. Now, in this season of your life, I'm going to bring back the strength of your youth. The days will be long, I tell you the truth. You're going to become an old man. But I hear the Lord say to me that you're going to fix hearts just like you fix things. Because God is going to give you wisdom, understanding and insight. The Lord loves the humble because He can raise them up. You're going to see how the Lord's going to raise you up. Watch, watch that space. Amen and amen. Is that family? Are you family? Is that your daughter? Daughter, quickly stand. I hear the Lord say to me, ask me whatever you wish. I'll do it for you. You see, I... I, I I feel the Lord has got unusual compassion when it comes to you. The Lord is like a brooding hen over you. He wants to protect you. There's been a lot of, a lot of people that have wanted to attack you, steal from you, get your future away from you. And the Lord has somehow protected this the whole way. You, you've had some blows. I can see that you've been hurt and I can see the trauma. But I, I hear the Lord say to me, that none of these will have a permanent effect because I've guarded you and I've shielded you. But I see the Lord, and even as you stand, you may be not aware of it, but I see light on you. And, I, and the light of the Lord is the light of the Lord. And I, and I hear the Lord's delight saying to me to say to you, very simple, that ask Him, He'll do it for you. Ask the Lord. Don't have small requests in the presence of the King. Ask the Lord. Believe Him, trust Him. He can do it. He's God. I want to say to you something. God delights over you. God approves over you. And God loves you. And I hear the Lord say to me, I must say this to you. Never believe any voice that don't agree with these three things. You are beautiful, wonderful, because He says it. And I hear the Lord say to me, I must say to you, you are worth the best. And you have to go for that. Nothing but that. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise, won't you? Come on, let's just bless Him. Let's just bless Him. Just 10 seconds of praise. 10 seconds. Um, let's just, oh, 10
10 more seconds, just 10 seconds quickly, guys. You can take your seats just for a moment again. Can I have, I just want to prophesy one or two more. Uh, Ma'am, with the, with the blue. You, yeah, yeah, no, it's you. Yeah. I hear, the, I hear the Lord say very simple. I see you journaling a lot. You write, you like to write and to consider and to meditate. And I, as you, as you consider, as you journal, as you meditate, I just hear very simply, the Lord says to me, everything you write down, I take note of. I don't miss the request. I don't miss the things. Even the things that you rip up and throw away and say, this cannot be. And the Lord says, don't throw away the stuff that I've given to you. You're a deep woman, but that's how the Lord made you. He made you to think. You don't always fit in because you think too far. Okay? And this is why the enemy has got you confused. Because sometimes when you think far, what you unfortunately do, the things that has happened to you, you bring them with. And the Lord heals you from time to time. I see the Lord multiple times coming to you, healing you from incidents. But somehow you go back and you pick these things up again and you bring them with you. And I hear the Lord say to me, let the bags go. And be who I made you to be. And I hear the voice of the accuser of your life saying that you are not a success. I want to say to you that's a lie out of the pit of hell. You are a success. You are a success. You are a success. There is nothing here that God cannot redeem. You are a success. When you were smaller, there was a very harsh authoritarian voice of your life. It shaped the image of who you think a woman should be. I hear the Lord say that voice was wrong. Strong. Strong over your life. But the voice of God over your life in this night for the both of you. You know, if I look at you, I see spring. I see spring. And I want to say that as a as a as a as a just as a saying tonight that may may your heart yearn to walk into the spring of life. Because I just see that. I see the winter is gone. Spring is coming. And even as you stand in front, have you ever, you know, I don't know if you, I haven't been there, but I, I've seen it on, a, on movies and stuff where these, these, these flowers start to bloom in Netherlands. It just blooms everywhere. I see that of your life. God's going to make many flowers bloom. It's going to happen quickly. You don't even, and it's going to be multiple. I see red, I see orange, I see white, I see blue, I see many colors. There's a lot of dreams that's going to happen simultaneously. You won't even need to wait for it. Sometimes you look at yourself and you say, God, do you ever hear me when I pray? God says, I listen to every single word. Every word. You're in the right place for the right time, for the right reasons, for the right moves that God's going to pull. Let me say it just like this. Sir. I, I see the Lord is going to take you. And the Lord is going to shift everything quickly. And then you're going to find a wind behind you. And you're going to say, how is it possible that everything is working together suddenly? It's because you've turned your heart to the Lord. And now, excuse the pun, He's literally the wind. It's going to blow this boat into the path of success. Because it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many of the plans of a man's heart, but it's the purpose of the Lord that prevails. Amen. God bless you. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Bless you. Come on, let's give Jesus just a praise of Come on, let's give Him all the praise tonight. Come on, worship Him, praise Him. Come on, come on. Do you love Jesus? Well, He loves you absolutely adores you absolutely adores you amen why don't you lift your hands to the lord everybody lift your hands to god the lord loves you but he delights in you too and so father i want to pray in this moment right now lord i want to pray for everybody that's online and lord for everybody that's inside you may they know in this night that the voice of the beloved cries out over their lives it is stronger than any other voice 
in Jesus name can you pray in tongues everybody can I just keep on prophesying I just have people that are popping out in the spirit is that okay just give me a bit, bit of time people came to hear the, to get words from the Lord come on just pray in the spirit that couple there you guys there that's a uh, yeah yeah you're just friends are you can, are you married are you married yes 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 okay okay just just be sure if you listen to the lord he will make it easy and i hear the lord saying over you crying speaking up but hard over your lives I hear the Lord roar over your life. And I hear the Lord say, if you trust me, I'll shape everything according to the future that I have. But you have to trust Him. And trusting the Lord means placing Him first. And as you place Him first, you're going to see God move upon your life. Yeah, I see a lot of hooks. It's like small little hooks. As I look at you, I see small hooks everywhere. How the enemy has tried to hook you with lies and deception and things. I hear the Lord say, if you allow me, I'll remove each and every one of these little hooks so that you can fly into your full potential. God has got a potential over your life and He wants to see it come to pass. Only thing you must do is listen to the Lord and He'll do it for you. Amen. There stands a man right there at the back of a khaki jacket on, bald head. Yes, you. The dream that you have in your heart is not dead. Your friends were wrong. Say it again. The dream that you have in your heart is not dead. Your friends were wrong. You see, the company you keep can, can uproot you or can encourage you or demotivate you, unfortunately. I'm not saying anything about your current friends. What I am saying is that there was company that you kept that wanted you to go that level. Now, eagles are alone. turkeys flock together but you want to be an eagle right so this is the thing that lord wants to do with you the enemy got you into isolation to separate you from the plan of god and he did it through people and people got your ear and started to pull you away but inside deep inside your heart there was always a fight for you know there's more to you than what meets the eye that's why when you look at things around you, you get very frustrated from time to time because you know there's better that there's better that God has for you and you're right and I hear the Lord say it is as simple as stepping back and defaulting to what he said originally you see forgiveness resets innocence let me say it again forgiveness resets innocence and I feel the Lord saying to me to say to you tonight the first place where you start is to forgive yourself you let go of the past you remember it no more and you move with the lord the bible says paul says i consider the past no more i reach out for that what is in front of me to take hold of it that i might run my race and i hear the lord say to me that as you take hold of your future the time is not wasted opportunities might be but the lord can give you many opportunities if you trust him the lord is zealous of you very very zealous because there's a davidic nature inside of you if you ask me what's a davidic nature there there is a worshiper inside of you there is someone inside of you that god what god wants that person to come out of you because god wants you to into a whole new space with him are you there the lord loves you and is zealous for you and so i want you just to do this one thing select the people that give you counsel very very selectively because God wants to take you to a whole other place. Amen. Ma'am, I, I um, what's your name? Grace. Awesome name. Grace. Is that your children? Okay. Grace, I see the Lord says, no miss opportunities, no more. No more missed opportunities. You've tried once, twice, three times, four times, five times, and I hear the Lord say, no more missed opportunities. Opportunities will not be missed anymore. You will reach it every given time. You're a highly intelligent woman. And I hear the Lord say, Grace, 
as, and you need to hear this, you just need to wait on the Lord, listen to what He says, and reach. And you're going to take hold of it every given time. Your lonely days, God's going to call it to an end. And loneliness that is around you is going to cease in your life. Because God is going to place you into people's lives that loves you. Not that you're not loved, but I, I see the Lord just ending loneliness. And bringing you into a place where there's many people that loves you. And I hear the Lord say to me, the, the drought season is over. You're going to become a forest. A forest of fruit. Jesus made this statement. He said, my will is that they may bear much fruit. For the glory of the Father. May you bear much fruit, Grace, in Jesus' name. Sir, I, I see, um, what's your name? Lucky? I hear the Lord say, favor. Favor. Favor from this day. Like you've never had favor before. You don't need luck when you have favor. I say it again. You have favor from the Lord. I mean no pun there. But I, I just feel the Lord is saying to me, tell him, favor. I'm going to give you favor. As you walk into that workplace, say, I'm favored by the Lord. I hear the Lord say, dream big dreams. Because I've planned no small thing for your life. People have planned for you, but not the Lord. I hear the Lord say, tell Lucky, I've planned great things for his life. And favor goes with my purpose. You see, many is the plans of a man's heart. Again, I say, but it's the purpose of the Lord that will bring will prevail God's purpose of your life will prevail I see and as I stand in front of you I just want to say that again favor your mom prayed very hard for you very hard she fought many battles in the spirit and she won many of them and I hear the Lord say you will see favor from this day forward like you've not seen favor in your life before because Lord the Lord really loves you you're a natural leader you can speak and you can influence people Born to lead, now lead. Born to be a, a, a Christian that leads people, now lead them. Lead people to the Lord. Bring them home, man. Let's do it together. I bless you, Lucky. In Jesus' name. Last one. I'm going to stop now. The gentleman with the khaki, khaki uh, track suit. Yeah, yeah, you've just watched the other one. <laughs> but yes, so what's your name? TZ. TZ, just like that. Okay, Tepo. Tepo, is that your name? Tepo. The Lord made you as a foundation to be strong in the things of God. That's why there's been many occasions in your life where people wanted you to be the center of the focus. But in actual fact, the Lord has made you a foundation. And on this foundation, God's going to build strong with your life. You're going to be able to, you see, when you are in this church, nobody worries much about the lights if the foundation is fine. So a building is condemned by its foundation, and it's built upon by its foundation. And I hear the Lord say, the foundation that's laid in you is strong. Strong. And you have been born to carry much weight. And you're going to carry much weight for the Lord. And I hear the Lord say, it's not just going to be one thing. It's going to be multiple things because you're built like that. You're built to be a foundation block for what the Lord wants to do. And so as you start to move with the Lord, understand how He made you. Are you there? Never be a light because that's not who you are. Never try to be a door because it's also not you are. You have been built for great things. You ask me, who can I liken it to? It's like Joshua. Joshua saw the giants and said, with God, we can take this on. That's who you are. You are made like a Joshua, a foundation, something that God can start with to build a new generation with. You're part of the new generation of leaders that God's going to raise up in this hour to lead this nation back into light. You're part of that movement because you're a foundation block for the purpose of God. I bless you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise. Oh, my Lord. Are you there? Come on, can we just love him with 10 seconds of praise? I'm finished. Yeah, let's just sing that. Heaven is here right now. Come on, let's just sing it for a moment.
What I want us to do tonight, I want us to bless the Lord. Is that okay? And I'll be not say that. You don't bless God with your finances. You honor God with your tithes and your offering. Is that fine? Can we honor God tonight with our tithes and our offerings, please? You're welcome, Pastor Stephen. Won't you come, please? You're welcome to come and honor the Lord here in front. You can honor the Lord there at the back. But let's honor the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. Let's just sing that song again. And uh, let's honor God appropriately tonight. Come on, church. Let's go for it. Thank you so much. Everybody online as well. I want you to take a moment and honor the Lord with your finances. Thank you. Come on, let's honor the Lord. Yes, heaven is here right now. I just want to have just, just two things from my side. Uh, no, let me not lie. Three. There's three things from, from my side. All that I want to just say is just, uh, if you haven't yet registered for EBI, which is starting next week, Tuesday, and you can be like, what is EBI? Well, on your way, as you go and register and you put on your details, you'll find out in the next 10 weeks. It's going to be awesome. Um, now I'm just making a joke. But honestly, we want every single person to be part of the EBI that's coming up. Maybe just a comment on that. If you didn't do EBI 1, you can still do EBI 2. Now that that's settled, everybody is without excuse. It's going to be an amazing time as we just journey into um, the, the, the Bible Institute together. It's going to cost you 199 Rand. Most of you can't even have a proper meal with that. Um, anyway, Unless you go and eat a spatlo, then you can basically eat a lot. Okay, but but anyway, just uh, just as you know, uh, it's going to be a ten-week course. It's going to be really life-changing. As would we do that together? Honestly, we want every single person to be part of that. Then on the second thing is we've got six spaces left on the marriage camp. Um, those of you who know something about. The marriage camp, it's, it's, it's life transforming. And honestly, if you are married and maybe you are going to get married right before the marriage camp, which, which is happening next month, we highly want to recommend that you actually come and join us on this marriage camp. It's going to cost you two and a half thousand rand for the couple for a weekend at a four-star lodge, all meals and things included. You're not going to bring your sleeping bag. <laughs> it's, it's really, it's, it's going to be an awesome time as you invest in your marriage. So as I say, please make so. If you want to have more details, there's Pastor Serena right there at the back. Uh, she's smiling all the way because she knows as well. So, uh, and then the last thing just from my side is that you would see uh, Pastor Gibbard's book. Uh, there's, a, there's a dream book and also a dream journal. That's, I think there's six copies also left. Um, five plus six, I must take this there. Uh, and honestly, won't you go? Because there's so many people that's asking the question. Because everybody dreams. Some of you, even while you while you're in the service, you're dreaming about something. I don't know. But um, and people want to understand how does God speak in dreams? Well, there's a simple way. Also with a dream journal, it's going to cost you 300 rand for both of them, which is honestly it's not a lot of money as you invest in and you just navigate yourself as a tool to to understand what is God busy saying to you while you are sleeping. Amen. So that's just from us. Won't you please stand with us, please? And um, let's end off this evening.
just in the goodness of the Lord, do you, do you believe that God's thoughts for you, they are good? God is in a good mood. He's made up his mind over you and he won't change that. Loves you. So Father, thank you that as we as, we as your children, we've got the high privilege of being called children of God, calling to our Father, Lord, and we want to ask that in this week, Lord, that you would pleasantly surprise every single person, people who find themselves in different challenges, different places, things that they feel might be so insignificant. Lord, everything counts before your eyes. Thank you, Lord, that you miss nothing. Every prayer, every thought. Thank you, Lord, that we can ask that in this week that every single person will be able to testify as we say that we've overcome by the enemy by the blood of the lamb which has already been shed and by the power of our testimony we ask that in this week give people testimony in Jesus name Lord we love you we honor you we think Lord that you are the greatest we just love you Lord may we be aware of you as we even leave from you in Jesus name Amen and amen. Bless you. Those of you who would like to do the dream journal in the book, you'd find Pastor Gibbard in the, in the foyer. Uh, please get yourself a copy or even bless somebody with something. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye.